let's say this is our first item. So I'm going to go ahead and put a case number on here and the date. and the time and this is item number one description this is a swab we're not packaging the blood stain per se so it's a swab of suspected blood stain or blood or possible blood or red substance. But we're not gonna call it blood unless we've tested it and we know that it is blood. Then the location, we're just going to, we've already got on our property report, whatever the address is. And for the location, we're going to put whatever the surface is. Bathroom, countertop. And then collected by, that's me. All right, so I have gone ahead and filled this out and I am now all ready to do my collection. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put on my gloves. and go ahead and open up one of my swab. And uh, these are sterile, so we open them up. And here is our swab. Now, what I need to do is add two drops of distilled water on it. I'm gonna put two drops here. So now I can do my sample. And I'm just gonna rub it firmly the tip, rotate it, and that is plenty. Now we need to let this dry. All right, so we let that air dry. Now I need to do one more thing here. I need to take a control sample. So I'm going to open a second swab. Again, I'm going to put two drops of distilled water on it. And then for my control sample, I'm going to sample away from, but on the same surface, away from the evidence. And again, it's the tip of the swab you want to get. All right. So now I have a control sample. And then you put that also into your drying rack. You will end up packaging both items. And so this would be item number one, and that'd be item 1A. And on 1A, it goes into a separate envelope, and it would say control for item one. I'm gonna let these dry. Now let's say that you are doing many of these. Problem comes up with, oh, am I gonna lose track of which swab is which item? So to avoid that, what I do is I have some of these Avery labels, small Avery labels, and I'll go ahead and put uh, one and one A on these little labels and attach them to the swab stems. Then later, when I need to package, I'll know which ones are which. But now, in the meantime, I have picked up my pen and made my labels. I've handled this box. I've probably done some other things. So I need to go ahead and change my gloves and put on fresh gloves to finish up here. And I'm wearing my mask. And now to package this, I need a bindle paper folded. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold my bindle paper.
All right, so I've got my bindle ready. And now I need to go ahead and collect my evidence or take my collected evidence and package it. So I'm gonna take item number one here, this sample. So here is my sample, I've broken off the tip. I'm going to open up my bindle, drop it down into the bottom. Making sure it goes all the way to the bottom and then fold it. Complete the fold. Now that's not gonna come out at all. I go ahead and put this inside the envelope. I'm going to use our evidence tape. So the evidence tape should be just a little bit longer than the, the width of your opening. I've got it completely sealed. And then because this is suspected blood stain, I'm going to take my biohazard sticker and apply it. 